Friends Just Made a Podcast. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. It's called Culture Bucket. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. Culture Bucket. George and Hi, welcome back to Culture Bucket, your favourite podcast, uh, the world's greatest podcast um, of all time, voted for by me as being the best. This is episode 61. Um, we're now on that big countdown, uh, 59 more episodes to the big 120. Can't wait for that one. It's going to be good. And um, yeah, this week we're going to do another top five, one of our classic top fives, and we're going to be talking about one of our favourite actresses. Sandra Bullock, and I can't do it alone, so my co-host is here with me to stop me from rambling on like this for too long. Hello, Alex, my co-host Alex, hello. Hi, G. Hi, everyone. How are you today, G? Good. Wonderful. I'm on holiday today, so I'm happy (sighs) and um, relaxed, and uh, all is well in the world. How are you today? I wish I was a teacher in the UK. Do you? Why? For the for the fact that now you have a little break. Uh, oh, well. I know. I I know. This is a controversial thing, and like people could teachers people consider teachers like you know you get on lots of holidays, but you kind of need it because it's such a high <laughs> stress job that right now I would definitely would appreciate to have a few days without without marking. Crowd control, uh, parent control. <laughs> That'd be quite nice. Um, yeah. Preparing, and you know, I think, I think, I think the English system has got the right thing that every few weeks you have like a little week off to re rehumanize, become a human again, and then <laughs> go back to being a teacher. Um, yeah. So. I'm a bit jealous. I'm sorry. It's okay. But in Italy, You're we right. do have three months off in the summer, which is too uh, long. All right, okay. I'm not sorry anymore then. But it's too long because you become a human again and then in, in September you go, ah, oh, ah. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I? <laughs> I supposed to be teaching uh but yeah so um good excellent times yeah buddy good stuff uh so yeah this week we're talking about sandra bullock yeah i love her <laughs> yeah good me too i realized when we started this process that i hadn't seen enough of her movies despite how much i um say that i love her so i've done mm. some 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 swatting this week some cramming um mm. s- some good some bad we'll get to it later but it's exciting uh, for, for the first time in a while i found doing this list extremely difficult really? so i went for nostalgia and love for what that's a yeah yeah <laughs> I, I think that's a valid i think that's a valid take even in her bad films she's good uh yeah she is she's good in every film she's yeah. ever done yeah um, even the film I watched this week that wasn't very good, she was good in it. I want um, to know what so, film it is. You tell me. I'll after, tell you in yeah? a bit. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Join it. Uh, but um, yeah, all the actors were good in that movie. Actually, it was just it, it wasn't. It was a bad, badly made film. So, shall we get into our first segment of today, which is of course culture catch up. That's the one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's your t- it's your turn yes. to tell us first now what you've been doing now. Yes, yes. Um, mine this week is quite short. Uh, it's been a busy week of uh, report cards and etc. etc. 
Uh, I already moaned with George before, so I'm not going to bore our listeners with <laughs> my uh, teacher moaning. So I haven't really been uh, that, uh, been able to watch much. But I've watched another couple of, uh, last, week's, uh, last week I talked about um, starting watching Euphoria, uh, which is this HBO series. Um uh, which you know, if you live under a rock, then you don't know what it is. But you probably know what it it's, is. It's it's a show about teenagers sleeping with each other and doing lots of drugs, made yes. by a man in his mid to late thirties. That's yes. my understanding of it. Yeah, he's getting a lot of. <laughs> he's getting a lot of like. <laughs> in fact, last week when I was saying it's good, after I spoke about it with you, I've seen a lot of kind of things about him saying that he's a bit obs- You know, he's a bit. Uh, the borderers and maybe he shouldn't show so much nudity and then um one of the uh actors uh Sydney Sweeney who's we also have uh, seen and loved in um um the white lotus uh she's the one that shows uh, yeah. the most skin but from what i've noticed there is w- the first episode she shows the most skin uh, but I haven't noticed much after. Of course, uh, all of them uh, wear very revealing clothes. Um, and I don't know what is behind it. Um, I hope I hope the actors feel comfortable with it. And, you know, when I see interviews, they all seem to be really happy to be in this show. Um, for example, we never see Zendaya naked, for example. I've noticed that, like, in, in moments, Zendaya is never naked. So I think there is a choice. Yeah, I think um, it feels like Zendaya's got a choice. So hope, hopefully they're not being treated sep- differently, um, mm. because there's a there's a scene in the episode I'm going to talk about now that um, uh, somebody takes Zendaya's clothes off, but you don't see anything. You only see uh, like a blurred <laughs> thing. So Zendaya yeah. clearly doesn't want to be seen naked. Right. And so I think I hope all the actors have the same treatment and the same choice so i'm not sure why sam levinson is uh, getting so much backlash but there must be something maybe i don't know but i'll i'll uh, if, be- if it becomes then a controversial thing then we'll we'll uh, address it um but yeah no i wanted to talk about um i'm still watching it and i think um in this in this season he has uh, become more uh, experimental and um I just wanted to talk quickly about uh, episode uh, five. So uh, I just wanted to just talk about the amazing force of nature that Zendaya is. Uh, this episode is totally carried by her and uh, she's um, she's suffering with like a severe drug addiction. And if you if even if you don't want to watch the show, I think you should watch episode five of the show of, of season two, because Zendaya is incredible in it um i cried a lot during this episode it's really powerful and she is incredible she's an amazing actor and that's why i want to just say that i watched the episode yesterday because every episode is one hour and that's why i haven't really been able to um watch anything yeah it's a lot it's, it's long but um if you if you're not interested in euphoria I still would recommend to watch episode five. It could easily stand alone um, because um, it starts in a way that it, it it could actually be just like a short film dealing with addiction. I think episode five, uh, Zendaya should get every kind of award and every praise in the world because she's amazing and uh, that's why i wanted to talk about euphoria again i'm not gonna well maybe i'll talk about it for again next week i don't know um yeah. Uh, but yeah <laughs> and what i didn't realize is maud apatow who's in it is judd apatow's daughter oh yeah 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 and she was she, in loads of his films yeah she's for in years, this is right? 40 she's in knocked yeah. up um judd apatow's and his wife who is called who's also the main character in this is 40 Leslie Mann. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she yeah. is Leslie Mann's and Judd Apatow's daughter, and she's uh, uh, one of... She's uh, Sydney Sweeney's uh, um, sister in um, in this. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, yes, and I'm just going to talk quickly about a book uh, that I've read and uh, is called um, Voices of the Lost by uh, Hoda Barakat. And Hoda Barakat is uh, was born in uh, is a Lebanese um, writer, 
and uh, this book I I I read to because uh, I don't know if you know the charity Choose Love. Uh, I don't. Uh, there's this charity uh, Choose Love, which um, <clears throat> is uh, a charity that uh, helps uh, refugees uh, around the world, and uh, they have a shop online and sometimes at Christmas in London they have it um they have it they also have a physical shop and what you do you you can buy healthcare you can buy a, a, a safety jacket you can buy anything that you can give so you buy you don't buy the physical stuff you you just give yeah. the money to let's say yeah. I want to give a child uh, education so you you buy the education package or you you want to buy a woman some um you know uh, sanitary products you do that you a yeah. tent winter clothes so it's like a shop that you buy things and says, instead of just giving money you actually buy physical things for for um refugees or people that uh, need help and um so uh, the charity choose love about um a few months ago was um uh, talking about this book and so i uh, decided to read it so it's the six strangers that are writing letters and uh, these letters get kind of found by the next stranger uh, what connects them is uh, they come from countries that are torn apart by war and uh, they um, they share in these letters uh, their darkest secrets and these letters never sorry spiders little spiders <laughs> and these letters um are written to people they love br- mothers fathers brothers a lost love and they every chapter is like basically the 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 letter being picked up by someone and read by someone else um and a, it's a story of characters that are battling uh displacement poverty and what happened to them and what they have done to um to get to where they are it doesn't matter who is who is writing the letter is is it's it's um it's basically five letters from in a chain and and people talk about how they're feeling and what is happening to them it's it's a really beautiful book and i i really loved reading it but also hated reading it because it's just really kind of uh, uh really sad and people i'm realizing that you know there's it's one point one of them says i don't even know if my city is there anymore you know the the thought of displacement of leaving your family your friends behind hoping for a new and happier time but not necessarily having it so i think it's a it's a really good book uh voices of the lost and i think the title is like true because you know even even writing this letter they these letters never get sent because there's nowhere to send them uh so it's a yeah it's a it's an interesting book uh maybe hard to read but um i think it's also important to kind of uh, um read it and also, she's a great writer. She's really, really good. Uh, Hoda Barat. Yeah. Mm. Sounds. Uh. Yeah. Sounds intense, but good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm in an intense reading stage, and maybe that's why I'm not watching so many things. And maybe I should like. But um, I I really enjoyed it. Ah, <sighs> have I bored you? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> There's just not enough oxygen in my room. <laughs> Open the windows. Uh, I'm all right. So. <laughs> And that's it for my culture catch up. Um, I started watching the se- season seven of Brooklyn Nine Nine again. Love it. You know, not much to report. Still good. I still love it. So cool. How about you, G? What have you been up to? Um, not loads and loads and loads, but a couple of things. I went to the cinema this week to see uh the new Roland Emmerich disaster movie, Moonfall. Ah, oh, is that the one the that we fall? you showed me the the trailer about that we weren't yeah, yeah, we weren't yeah. sure if it was going to be funny or a disaster or with Halle Berry? Yeah, 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 with okay. Halle Berry. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it is a disaster movie that has jokes, 
Yeah. But not many. Not I think all of the jokes are in the trailer, so it's not as funny as maybe the trailer would make out it is. Although the jokes in the trailer aren't funny, but all the attempts at jokes are in the trailer. Uh, it follows the adventures of Jocinda Fowler, played by Halle Berry, who <laughs> is a NASA astronaut or was a NASA, NASA astronaut and is now the deputy director of NASA. And Patrick Wilson, who I adore, and I adore Halle Berry, to be fair, as uh, Brian Harper, who is a disgraced former astronaut. And a character called Dr. Houseman, who is played by John Bradley, who people may know from the series Game of Thrones. He played Samuel Tarly on Game of Thrones. And um, the film opens in 2011 with uh, Halle Berry and Patrick Wilson and somebody else who doesn't matter because they die very quickly uh, <laughs> repairing a satellite. Uh, when suddenly some big cloud of black goo stuff thing attacks their sat that attacks their shuttle, knocks Halle Berry out. Patrick Wilson tries to save the other guy, but he can't. Oh, he's so torn up and cut up, cut up about it. The other guy dies, and then uh, when Patrick Wilson saves Halle Berry, and they both come back to Earth, and he claims that a big black cloud of sentient goo attacked them and then disappeared into the moon. Uh, NASA goes, no, that didn't happen. That's impossible. You're fired. And then we cut to 10 years later. He's now uh, living in a... He's obviously... His wife's left him because he lied about aliens and his, his son is a is a little petty criminal doing doing speeding and getting arrested for it. And his, his wife's now married to Michael Pena from the Ant-Man movies uh, who runs a Lexus shop. And this movie is very keen to let you know how great Lexuses are or Lexi. Um, as well as the antivirus software Kaspersky, which gets uh, a look in as well. This movie was what? funded entirely through um, product placement, I think. What do you call it? Kaspersky? Kaspersky. It's amazing Kaspers- how, like, I never Kaspers- spoke about this <laughs> thing. about. It's funny when you don't say that out loud ever, because I always call it, like, Skarpersky, but I think that's really it's stupid. Skarpersky. It might be Kaspersky because it's but Kaspersky Skapa, sounds Skapersky. silly. I always call it Kaspersky something. Well, it starts with a K, so you're definitely wrong. Kaspersky. Let me check a second. <laughs> it's Kaspersky or Kas- Kaspersky. There's multiple S's in there. Kaper, Kap, Kaspersky. Kaspersky. Yeah. Or Kaspersky. Yeah. No, Scrubber Sky. Scrub, 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 scrub. It's spelt with Spuck. a Y, so it's probably Casper Sky, but I think that sounds stupid, so I say Kaspersky, because I like the way that sounds. It's better. Russian. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So it's, oh, if Russian. it's Russian, it's called Kaspersky. You're right. There we go, then. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. The winner of uh, the pronunciation <laughs> challenge is George. Uh, at one point in this movie, there's a the character in a hotel that looks like it's been assembled entirely f- in a computer. Uh, it looks like a CGI building. It's weird. And there's a billboard behind it that just says Kaspersky in big letters with nothing else on it. It's very weird. And then there's a bit <laughs> later where they go they go up to a space shuttle and the space shuttle's antivirus is provided by Kaspersky as well. It's weird. <laughs> it's a weird movie. Um, so basically, we've cut to 10 years later. He's a disgraced, living on his own, bachelor, driving a motorbike around, wearing leather jackets. He's, he's turned into a bit of a rebel. Uh, Halle Berry is now no longer an astronaut. She is the deputy director of NASA. And then we are introduced to Dr. Houseman, who is a conspiracy theorist. Uh, he calls himself a megastructurist, which isn't a thing. Um, where And he's he's convinced that the, uh, that the moon... I'm going to spoil this movie, by the way. This movie is going to be fully spoiled here because I don't... <laughs> It's, I don't care. So skip like 10 minutes ahead if you don't want to hear about this. Um, Dr. Houseman is convinced that the, the moon is a megastructure that was built by aliens for unknown purposes uh, and is powered by a, a white dwarf star, uh, which he says is hidden in the centre of this hollow moon. Uh, obviously, he's right. That's that's correct in the, in the world of this movie. And uh, he discovers that the moon is... Uh, changed its orbit and is now on like a spiraling trajectory towards planet earth hence the title moonfall it's going to hit the earth at some point and destroy all of us but before that happens of course it's going to create all kinds of gravity problems um as it gets closer to the earth because of course the the moon's gravitational pull affects the earth already that's why we have tides etc um so he he's very convinced that this is a thing uh, he gets Patrick Wilson 
to try and help him get in touch with NASA, but they make this discovery about the same time, uh, and it goes public. And then we we have these scenes of the the moon is sort of closing in on the Earth, and the as it moves across cities, it's pulling the tides with it. So these huge waves are like hitting these cities, but you don't see any characters other than it's like these empty doll cities that have been created by a set dresser, and no humans have been placed inside them. It's very very strange movie. There's no sense of scale to any of the spectacle in these like disaster sequences, which you normally get from these movies, particularly made by Roland Emmerich, who knows how to do this. He made Independence Day, one mm. of the you know greatest disaster films of all time. Um, eventually, after an hour and a half of just all I can describe as faffing around uh, and like overly sincere conversations where characters just sort of turn up in a room and start having very boring discussions with each other about how they betrayed each other in the past but now they're going to work together to say stop the moon from uh, eventually finally the three of them who are dr houseman should not be in and he's not capable of being an astronaut there's a point in this movie where they say we have to launch a shuttle in 28 minutes and that's the point where they should say well that's impossible a space shuttle can't be launched in 28 minutes so we're all going to die. But instead, they launch the space shuttle in 28 minutes. They fly up to the moon. They go inside the moon. And then they discover uh, that the moon is indeed hollow. There's a big cloud of black stuff that's flying around inside the moon. It starts to attack them. And then we discover that... Are you ready for this, Alex? No. The, there was the, the moon... The moon was there was, an, there was an ancient society of humans on another planet deep in space. They created an artificial intelligence that is shown to be this sort of black cloud of nano robot things. And everyone in this ancient society has them inside these glass, little glass cages that do, I guess it's like this ancient society's version of an Alexa. But instead of an Alexa, it's a little glass triangle with a with a cloud of nanobots in it. They all get, they all become sentient and decide that they don't like the humans anymore. So they break out of these little glass cages. They all join up together to be one giant cloud, and they kill everyone. But a few people manage to escape, and they go off and they make the moon. They build the moon. They build a load of moons. They build like fifty moons. <laughs> they send and they send all the moons off to look for planets that are habitable for life. And the only planet they find is Earth. One of them finds Earth and it seeds the genetic DNA for humanity on planet Earth and then orbits around the Earth to protect it. And then eventually, cut to present day, the cloud of AI has found the moon and is attacking the moon and making it fall into the Earth and destroy all organic life. Yeah, you're happy with that? Like... My, my, can you see my hair tear? <laughs> my, my forehead. <laughs> that makes well, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's very no, it's very no. It does make sense, Alex. Ancient, hum, ancient <laughs> humans made AI and it killed them. So they built the moon and sent it to create the earth so our ancestors were at living on another place somewhere it looks like the halo out of the video game halo yeah and now they but there's another ai that they have that's a good ai that's gonna and it helps patrick wilson it makes him have visions of things and it, it tells him all of this then patrick wilson is able to is going to sacrifice himself to defeat all the to defeat the evil ai with an emp uh to to, to knock it out with an electromagnetic pulse but then Dr. Houseman at the last minute jumps in and does it and sacrifices himself to save them. And Patrick Wilson and ha Halle Berry go back to it. Right. While all of this is happening, by the way, Patrick Wilson and Halle Berry's family are down on the ground. And there are these scenes where they're like talking. And then one of them will look over the other one's shoulder and be like, oh, my God. And it'll be the moon just creeping up over the horizon, just a giant moon. <laughs> appearing Because <laughs> it's like the moon is stalking them. And then it will a gravity will start going crazy. There's a bit where a tree falls on somebody and this other girl is trying to lift this tree off him and it's like a massive tree. It's like clearly she's never going to lift it. No human being could. But then out of nowhere, the moon appears and she's like, the moon's going to help. And obviously the gra gravity then allows her to lift up the tree and save the guy. It's a stupid film. Um, is it good? And then it, no, it's not. It's a really <laughs> awful film. Um, the last half hour inside the moon when it goes crazy and starts explaining all of this, that's like quite good and fun and I really enjoyed it. But there are 90 minutes of film before it that are awful. And Roland Emmerich is capable of making an entertaining disaster movie. I even liked Independence Day Resurgence, his second Independence Day movie, which everyone in the world hated. 
Uh, and, in, in, and interestingly, that movie ends with a benevolent, benevolent techno alien society gifting humanity the tools to go off into space to, to fight the evil aliens, which is exactly the same way that Moonfall ends. Moonfall ends with the benevolent AI inside the moon gifting humanity the tools it needs to go off and fight the evil alien AI out in deep space. Because Roland Emmerich is clearly determined to make this film about us fighting aliens in deep space. And he didn't get it from he Independence Day Resurgence didn't do well enough to justify making that sequel. So now Moonfall, he hopes, will uh, justify making that sequel. But it won't because it's been a big flop because it's bad. <sighs> How is Halle Berry in it though? Um, doing the best she can with a terrible script, which is also true of Patrick Wilson. Doing the what best they can with bad scripts. Yeah, they're 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 yeah. Doesn't work. None of it works. Michael Pena. Michael Pena. You know, in Ant Man, Michael Pena. Yeah. He's like Paul. He's so funny. He's not allowed to be funny in this movie. He doesn't have a single joke. Uh, he just runs a Lexus dealership. He's just there to sell Lexuses to the audience. I mean, honestly. Anyway. <laughs> oh, goodness. Was it not bad in another film that you watched? Uh, something about an island that you really hated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantasy Island. Yeah. yeah. That movie's awful. Again, yeah, Michael Pena. Michael Pena's doing the best he can, though. I, I, I've, got, I've got a lot of time for him. And Patrick Wilson and Halle Berry. Not John Bradley. Yeah. He's bad. Are we going to yeah, watch him again when we watch uh, Marry Me? Uh, marry me, marry me, marry me. <laughs> yeah, we've committed to doing that, aren't we? we Stay committed. tuned for the Marry Me special. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to watch it. <laughs> okay, so next I also saw in the cinema Genius. Genius. Gene, 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 J E E N hyphen, Yus. Oh, okay. Y U H S, uh, Act One, hmm. which is the the documentary oh. film. Oh, I wanted to talk about Kanye at some point today. About Kanye, we can talk about Kanye now. So I yeah. went to the cinema the other day and I watched Act One of Genius, a movie that is uh, twenty three years in the making or something. Since basically since before he ever even had a record deal, this guy Coody came upon Kanye West in Chicago kind of correctly was like this guy is going to go somewhere some this guy yeah. is going to be big in some way cuz look at look at him he's 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 incredible um and even today you know removed of the of the context of good or bad whatever you think about Kanye he is incredible oh <laughs> he, he is um, he is a something isn't he he's never he's never not incredible whether that it means a good or bad thing is down mm. to uh, interpretation but he's always incredible <laughs> so yeah. uh, this guy started following Kanye around and um has made this documentary and it's going to be released on Netflix uh pretty shortly uh okay. i think 16th of february it's going to come out so like next wednesday maybe yeah. uh in three parts it's like three 90 minute acts um and they have for one night only they showed act one in cinemas okay uh, in the uk at least one one night only and act one follows from the very beginning of the documentary in about 1998 slash 2000 that sort of era where he was just getting started and was known only as a producer that created beats for uh, people like jay-z and other people on rockefeller records through to uh i'm not sure it, it, the kind of act one ends right around the time he gets his record deal so by the time this movie ended he hadn't even released his first album the the, the college dropout so that's sort okay. of and I, I believe act two will follow him from releasing college dropout to around late registration his second album mm -hmm. and then act three will quite quickly bust through the remaining you know <laughs> 15 years or so because i think he i think at a certain point the guy's access to kanye sort of became less and um a lot of act three from what i've read is made up of what publicly available kind of um archival footage which is a, is a pity because there's a lot there's a lot in those intervening years it would have been interesting to see the behind mm. the scenes on but um the access he had to, to kanye at this early stage in act one which is what i've seen so far is is kind of amazing like he's in kanye's apartment he's following him there's a there's an amazing scene where they're basically like Kanye West just he just wanted a, a record deal. He was working for Rockefeller. He'd he'd produced half of the Blueprint Jay Z's album that was massive, and he wanted to make his own album. And he wanted Rock Rockefeller Records to sign him as an artist and not just as a producer. And he goes into there. They're like, so we decided to just go to the offices and 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 
try and do something. And there's just these scenes of him walking into A and R reps offices in Rockefeller Records and like putting um the C D for All Falls Down, which was I think the first sort of song he finished that was his, into a record player and then rapping along to it like right in the faces of these A&R reps, uh, particularly these two women that you see in the movie, who just look utterly bored and uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of amazing because it is like, you know, it's all falls down. That's a that's an amazing song. Like he, that's one of the best tracks on his first album, which is full of really, really good songs. And like you're sat there listening to it and being like, this is great. Why? But they're just literally, they're just looking at him like he could, they they barely even register that he's in the room. And at one point in the second one, he does it too. Somebody else comes in and she just starts having a conversation with this person and ignoring the fact that Kanye's there rapping and he does look a bit dejected. It's interesting. It, again, it does help to give a bit of insight into his personality, his mindset, mm. this idea that like he was producing this music that anyone today will look at and say, this was clearly revolutionary stuff. This changed the face of what hip hop was. Yeah. And he was, it It was, it was formed. It was ready. It was what it was like. There was nothing unfinished about it. And he, he was taking it around to these record labels and they were literally just ignoring it. They had no interest in it. And, and that has, that attitude has stuck with him. The idea that he has to fight for every si- moment of success he gets has stuck with him since then. Uh, mm. Even today where now, unfortunately he is just regarded as a bully a lot of the time because he's, he's not, He's not the underdog anymore. He's he's at the very top of the pile, but he's still acting like he's an underdog, and it's a pity. So I got, I, got, I got out of um, I got out of the screening, and I was like, that was a pretty good movie. God, Kanye was good when he was just getting started, and like you see, like there's a sequence in the movie where he's gone he's gone and lived in New York for a bit. He's started getting recognised there. He's still not got a record deal, but like he's he's getting a name for himself. People know who he is. And he goes back to Chicago, his hometown, for like a music conference. He should be welcome there with open arms. And some guy, I can't remember his name now, Doug Infinite, I think he's called. Uh, you, you see this scene of him meeting this guy in like a restaurant. They talk about how like this guy taught Kanye how to produce songs, how to do samples and stuff. And then this guy goes off and does like a diss track to Kanye. And then Kanye hears it on the radio and he's like why is he's my what uh, and like this guy who's meant to be his friend has like done this to him and it's like even before he had a record deal people were sort of attacking him mm. uh and it was unjustified then and Kanye's response of being annoyed about it was fair but nowadays it's often justified and he, he's unable to see sort of the wood for the trees as it were so I came out of the cinema after watching that movie and had a notification on my phone being like Kanye West has posted the photo to Instagram and I was like oh this is always confusing and weird and on that occasion it was him um yelling at billy eilish for looking after her fans at her concert which was interesting yeah like all she said is like i wait for the people to be okay before i keep going like yeah what it wasn't a direct diss is what people thought it was but she's always been like that every performer has done that just because travis scott hasn't done it and it hurts his ego that everybody else has done it yeah like and so you know, every you know person I, that stops their concert is against Travis Scott. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah, I really hope she I mean I'm sure she won't, but I hope I hope nobody gets her to apologize because it would no. be insane because she's done I think she's too smart wrong. for that. Yeah, I hope so. And I hope he cancels I performing for at Coachella. What? For saving somebody? But I hope it was a di- I hope it was a, a I hope a, you it know, was a little a shady bit of a diss. comment at him because it but, it I mean, it's it's not even something worth like. Uh, it's it's it. I mean, what happened at Travis Scott's concert is such an unbelievably awful event and yeah. tragic and horrible. And um, what appears to be attempts to wiggle out of culpability for it are upsetting as well. And I don't think we should talk too much more about it because I don't think I've got all the facts. But that's to, a, but, um, but the, the the funny thing is like I'm gonna I'm not gonna perform in Coachella if she doesn't apologize. Well, don't perform. Your music is crap now, so who cares? Yeah, I'm a bit like that. I don't care. Like, don't, in the, don't, be, who be, be cares? Exciting like, if, he, if he pulled out and cancelled. Um, oh. But did you see what he was writing uh, about uh, Kim Kardashian? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. It's like, but he, now he, write, he writes in all caps. So it's like yep. him shouting, basically. Ah. Yeah, saying that apparently uh, uh, Kim Kardashian thinks that he put a hit on her. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ridiculous and yeah, like and he, t- he put up those messages from like 
Kim's cousin who messaged yeah. him asking if everything was okay. And yeah. then she was immediately like, hey, can I get some of your fashion clothes, please? Yeah, which is ridiculous. <laughs> he's, just, yeah, but he's just like... Kudos to the, Kim for not replying, but I don't know. It just seems like... I don't know. It just seems so weird. He's such a weird guy. It is weird. She did reply, though. Oh, saying that she hoped that yeah. things were. I mean, normal. I think she. I think it was fine for her to say that, but yeah, she did. Um, she did reply back, and then he 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 like screenshotted her reel, and the, oh, it was just. It's so sad because he was like, I don't know. He's obviously not a well man, and he was at one point one of the most important musicians in the world. And yeah. influential and 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 good. He made he made a, he made yeah. incredible music all the way up to about twenty sixteen. He was making amazing music, and then recently it's just been difficult. Even even if all of the controversial stuff about his life and personality and what he's done was removed, the music he's been making is not good. Like no. that's the that's that's the problem as well. And his his fashion, I'm not a fan of his. I don't care about fashion. Anyway. The the actual documentary Genius, Act One at least is pretty incredible and and definitely gives you an insight into his mindset even if it doesn't defend him. Uh, there's no real defense of how he is today. But um, so yeah, that's Genius. That's Genius. Sounds Not, good. It, it's worth watching. It's hit Netflix. Uh, I think when people when people hear this, it will have been out for a day. So go and go and check it out. At least Act One. Oh, the the final thing to mention is that the actual guy making the documentary, his voiceover is. Um, kind of annoying. I wasn't really keen on the actual mm. like quality of the documentary itself was pretty weak, but the footage is really impressive, is what I'd say. Um, other than that, a couple of albums to quickly recommend, and then we can move on. We've got uh, the yesterday the new Big Thief album, Dragon New War Mountain. I believe in you came out. It's it's ninety min. No, it's eighty minutes long. It's an hour and twenty minutes long, and it's pretty amazing. So I would recommend people check that out. It's full of really good indie folk music. It's got uh, a wide variety of sounds and ideas on it. And some of the tracks are just incredible. I've not listened to it loads yet, but I definitely recommend it. And um, the most dependable band in rock music, Spoon from Texas. Um, I was making a spoon. Oh, I see. I thought you were... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was good, making a good. spoon with my hand. <laughs> Did that confuse you? <laughs> it really confused me. It stopped me in my tracks. Um, I, know. I was like, um, like a spoon. How do you hold a spoon like this? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, they're they're very very good. They're very good. Um. Uh. Rock band. Um. Uh, the last album came out in 2017, Hot Thoughts. So it's been five years and they finally put out another record, Lucifer on the Sofa. And again, it came out yesterday, so I've not listened to loads and loads of it. But um, it's had incredible reviews across the board and does seem really good. And in particular, one of the singles, Wild, is maybe my favourite song they've ever done. So I'd recommend checking that out as well. Lucifer on the Sofa by Spoon and Dragon New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You by Big Thief. And that's all my culture catch up for today. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Boys. Nice. Okay, so uh truncated homework time. Yeah, uh so again, I have completely missed homework time. I apologize to our listeners, I apologize to George. I forgot to do my homework again. <laughs> I'm yeah. worse than my student. <laughs> uh, um but we live in a world now where we where we I I don't think we should strive for perfection at all times. I think it's too stressful and difficult. And there's no need for it. So occasionally right. forgetting to do homework is fine and we don't need to beat ourselves up about it, do we? No, no, no. Good. Because um, my homework technically should have probably been to watch the movie Amistad, which you had. Was that even in your top five? No, that was an honourable no, mention. You, you just picked out a two and a half hour long historical epic that you wanted me to watch, and I didn't watch it, and I'm sorry. You you watched two and a half hours long films. You watched, you know, recently you watched Duel. That's a, a that's a historical film. You what the watched, last Duel? Uh, at the House of Gucci. That was like six hours. Oh long. yeah, but that was in the cinema, and that's different because that's that was bad. I regretted. Watching oh, it. so if Alice recommended, it's 
you know, too long. No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't necessarily the length. It was more the the subject matter, uh, which I'm not going to deny is not incredibly important and valid. And I should watch that movie at some point. But this week has not been a week where I've been able to really contemplate watching uh, Amistad. So I watched Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which I haven't watched in probably over a decade. So it felt like a valid thing to do. I've not seen yeah. it in a very long time. And um, I was happy to see that it's as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, which I have watched more recently because I tend to watch that fairly often, but I haven't gone back to Last Crusade for a while. Mm. And it's a brilliant movie. The opening sequence, I forgot how good the opening sequence with yeah. River Phoenix is. Uh, and I love I love the way that you think that guy might be Indy at the start because he's got his hat <coughs> tipped down and then he gives Indy the hat. And then the bit where where Joaquin Phoenix, not Joaquin Phoenix, the bit where River Phoenix lowers his head and then it lifts back up again and it's Harrison Ford. That cut is why Steven so, Spielberg is such a good director. Yeah, that was and, good. and his editor is is on fire. And oh, it's so good. Um, yeah, it's a good and film. And it's just, yeah, and it, it the pacing of it is perfect. Like before you know it, they're having that tank chase on horseback and stuff. And then it's just in the end of the movie with that great sequence where they're trying to work out who has the grail. And I always remember that idea of like the grail being the, the cup that's least ostentatious because yeah. Jesus was a carpenter, etc. And it's just such a well-written, well-put-together little piece. And the, the bit where the guy drinks in the wrong cup and the, the night's like he chose poorly. And then that dude sort of ages into a skeleton and explodes yeah. against the wall. It's just wonderful. It's such a good movie. So I'm glad I watched that. I'm glad I took the time to uh, to check out Indiana and Jones. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. <laughs> and the last and the last duel again. But uh, no, it was good. Yeah, I will watch yeah. Jaws again, and I will talk about it. I'm just rubbish at the moment. That's you're not rubbish. That's the I that's what I was rubbish. trying to. No, you're not. Okay, but we yeah. will have a little bit of a cheeky my tube, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Good stuff. You ready for some more up and coming um, movie trailers that we can have a little chat about? Yes, please. Good stuff. I've got um, four to share with you today. Four. Four, if that's okay with you. Yes. Here comes the first one. It's a spooker, so prepare yourself. Oh, okay. So, oh, it's an A twenty. Oh, it's an A twenty. <laughs> oh, I did see a poster for this the other day. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I did see a poster for this. So, um, but I didn't really let, realize it was going to be a spooker. But now I've seen a twenty four. So yeah, great. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, good. It's directed by Alex Garland, who made um, Ex Machina and Annihilation, two very good films. Have you seen uh, Annihilation? No, or Ex Machina. Ooh. Um. This movie, you'll see when we start to watch this trailer, but this is pushing every single button that makes me excited for a movie. So this is rock oh, to like no. the top of my... So some body, <laughs> body horror... No, no, monster, not body horror. No, not insects, monsters. Insects, bodies. No, not insects either. Right, <laughs> let's press play and see what you think. Are you ready? Human centipede, let's go. No, that's not my fate. Don't, that's not... <laughs> uh, hang on. Oh. I've, can I just take a break for just a moment? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm Skyping with Alex. Okay, I'll speak to you later. Your mummy. Hello? Hi. Your yeah, mummy. she wants me to go. She wants me to go and buy a rug for her, and she she was like, "It's a rug that they've already got, and they want a second one, and it's only shot sold in this shop near me." Anyway, it's amazing how sorry. your voice changes when you reply to your mum. You go, "Hi." Oh. Hi. It's so cute. Okay. Mummy. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, mummy. Um. <laughs> no, 
it's fine. Like everybody no, does it with their moms. But you're just like, you're like, no, 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 no. I was rude. I was rude to my mum. Right. So we press play. To your, uh, maybe a little bit. Like, you know, we can wait. Like, you don't have to go like, Mum, I'm talking to my friend. <laughs> ah, Mum, shut up. Mum. <laughs> Mum. In the middle of something. <laughs> I'm Skyping with Alex. Shut up. I'm making, I'm making a podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Okay. Oh. You ready? So yeah, what I saw in the poster was exactly this scene, which is like a, I think it's a tunnel, uh, yeah. and water, and it's green. Yeah. Did you pick up on that? It also is done to look a bit like a skull. No, I did not pick okay. up that at all. Yeah, that because when you were like, I didn't realize it was spooky. In my head, I was like, it's a picture of a skull. It is not a picture of a skull. It's a tunnel. Yeah, but look, what, right? Well, well, let's watch the trailer and then you can go and look at the poster again and see how it's a picture of a skull. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Mummy. Okay. Shut up. Ten. Right, three, two, one, go. So there's a lady walking in the woods by herself. That's not something that you do. Not in a horror movie. And there's a tunnel. I would definitely yep. not go through that tunnel by myself. Not that no. skull looking tunnel, no. No. Oh, and she's shouting in the tunnel. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know why I'm getting... I'm getting far away from my computer because I'm scared of what's going to happen in the tunnel. It's very... Oh, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> okay. There's a face. Ah, oh, so there's a folk horror. Yes, That's please. That's why you like it. Yes, please. There's a face. Like, the guy... What are you doing here? Oh, it's English. Irish? English, I think. Oh, there's apples coming down from the tree. She lives in the countryside. Oh, there is a cemetery. <gasps> oh, door. Ah, oh, who's this guy? <gasps> who's at the end of the tunnel? Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh, God. No, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, he's running. Oh, she's running. I don't know. Men. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? It's a you pretty think? intense trailer. And then it goes, men. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> yes. I, yeah, I, don't, just... I don't think I like the title, but I, uh, I think it's going to be pretty scary. And see, I'm learning. This is a folk horror, probably, you know. If there's like faces with plants and trees, you know, it's something happening in the woods. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty scary. Yeah, it does look pretty scary. Yeah, but why is it called men? <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll find out. I kind of like that, though, because I like that there's a mystery about what the... Um... I think it would be scary if it was called man. Man. But you don't know what the... You don't yet know... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just um, feel like maybe the title is not appropriate. That's all. I'm sending okay. you a link now to the poster. So okay, uh, for the uh, the poster for the men. Yeah, and you you should be able to see how it's kind of a skull. Oh yeah, yeah, like the teeth underneath. Okay, okay, I yeah. get it. See, cool, when good. I saw the poster, I just I felt like it was something like nature or like you know a nice movie, but it's not. Great. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> it does look Moving. like a skull. Ah, because her she's the nose. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's a yeah. bit of shading on the trees to make them look a bit like eye sockets. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Now I can see it. Before I couldn't. Thank you for illuminating me. Illuminate me. Right, I'm going to send you another trailer now for a film that, against my better judgment, I've started to get a little bit excited about, and I'm definitely going to be disappointed. So, click against on that one. Against your better judgment. I wonder what yeah. it is. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> G. So, the next trailer that G has sent me is... <laughs> Jurassic World Domination. Dominion. 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 Do but just, Jurassic World Dominion. Just I haven't watched the ones with Chris Pratt at all. Well, wait till you see 
not the first Chris Pratt one is <laughs> is okay. Yeah. They've look. They've all got dinosaurs in them. So I guess ultimately. But, you know. They've all got dinosaurs in them, so that I'm on board. The first Chris Pratt one is okay. <laughs> the second Chris Pratt one is kind of a mess with yeah. some pretty great bits in it and some bits where you're just like, what are you doing? And the pa- the structure is weird in that movie. Yeah. This one, do you know anything about this film? Me? No, I haven't. Yeah. Like, since, since okay, the so, Jurassic Parks, I don't really... So well, you I just watch... To. So let's just watch this trailer and you can see what you think of what's happening okay. here. All right, three. Is you Jessica Chastain still in the picture? She's never been any of them. I don't know what you're talking about. Bryce Dallas Howard, maybe? Yes. Oh, God, I've done what everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It is easily, easier, easily. They're easily confused. I I view them both as the as the sort of strong independent women that they are and would never mix them up, but I guess it's not the same for you. <laughs> What's happening? You're <laughs> such an ass. No, I've honestly I I've have seen that I've seen that before as a thing that people get them confused, but I have never personally Like when I see them I know who that is who, similar. but for some reason like I I was convinced it was Jessica Chastain, but Jessica Chastain <laughs> is not in these ones, is um the other one. Yeah, the other one, you're right. That's what we call her, is the other one. What's her name? Because she's got two surnames. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Bryce, Howard. Yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard. The daughter yeah, yeah, of your yeah. favourite director, Ron Howard. Mm, that's not true. It is. No, it's you not. You love him. No, Let's I don't. move on. Don't spread fake news, please. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah okay, absolutely. three, two, one, go. Oh, it's winter on the plane. Oh, ah, oh. oh. I've never seen cowboys and something that was real. <laughs> cowboys and dinosaurs. Mhm. And it's snowing. I've never seen dinosaurs with snow. Yeah, it's a new. It's a new visual. It's interesting. Yes. I like this shot here of this little baby raptor walking through the snow. I think there's yes, some good, absolutely, some good baby shots raptor going with there. big raptor. But you don't want to be near a raptor. But no, no. But also, aren't these movies a little bit? Oh, is, she, is he trying to be friends with a raptor? Nobody's friends. This with is a raptor. his friend raptor. Like he trained. This raptor's in all three movies. He's trained her. She's called Blue. Ah. Oh, there's a fish one as well. There's yeah. a water, there's a water one who's destroying everything. There's a T Rex. Is no, this? This is a... the exciting part. <gasps> Laura Dunn! No! What? <laughs> I'm gonna pause it. Just a second. What's his name? <laughs> Sam Neil. I was so excited to see Laura Dunn. I had like a little spasm, <laughs> and then I forgot Sam Neil's name. Sam Neil's name. What the? F- what? Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I need to. <laughs> Are they back? Well, keep Why watching the trailer. What... Okay, what... sorry. Let's go. Let's go. What time? Let's what time are you on? Her. What time? What? What's your time? I'm at uh, one minute nineteen. Okay, I'm at one twenty-two. So you press play, and then I'll press play a moment later. Okay, I press play. God, they aged well. God, they aged well. They're so cool. Da da. Oh. Oh. We not only lack dominion yeah. over nature. Oh, she's she's back. <gasps> oh, it's it's him. <laughs> the other guy that I know. <laughs> Which Jeff I cannot remember his name now. The epic conclusion. The <gasps> I was wondering about feathers. I was gonna tell you something. Uh, let me sec Oh my goodness, great. Oh I'm, I'm itching everywhere. <laughs> oh, I might like this. No, I can't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite emotional. Yeah, man. It's emotional. Oh. There's a shot in a minute that got me pretty. You'll see. Ah. Uh. 
Look at this! Why do they always have to go bigger? Oh. Oh. I'm in tears. <laughs> Why am I in tears? Jeff Goldblum. I was so excited. Jeff Goldblum is back. Laura Dern is back. Sam Neill is back. And then what I was yep. going to ask you before is like in a world where we know that dinosaurs have got feathers how do these films still stick and there was a dinosaur with feathers yeah i mean the thing the thing about that is nobody nobody truly it's impossible no. to truly know what dinosaurs look like no absolutely. because all we have is bones right so yeah. now we did now we've decided that yeah they probably had feathers but that's why i've always sort of viewed and i think a lot of people view these monster these as monster movies about yeah. an invented because ver- like velociraptors i think they were about as big as chickens yeah like, yeah they were pretty it's tiny not, there's no real yeah. match to how dinosaurs are presented in this movie no. really to genuine genuinely how they were it's just the hollywood's idea of them but it's cool to see a raptor with feathers finally and like yeah them exploring that idea that's fascinating and you always said that you didn't like the sequels because why do people keep going back to the island but now the dinosaurs are out in the real world. Did they escape in the second one or something? So, so this is what I'm. I need the movie to explain because the second movie ends with about a hundred dinosaurs escaping into a forest. But just a second, I, should I watch the first two? Oh yeah, I yeah, I them? think so. No, no, they're 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 they're, they're silly, enjoyable fun. They're not okay. masterpieces, but they're okay. fine. They're probably better than you're imagining. A lot of people hate them. I think okay. they're okay. Like there's definitely um, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, particularly in the first one she's in, is kind of quite a sexist view of what a, it's. It's not great. There's definitely things in them that aren't great, but there's big dinosaur action, which is what I like. But this one, and like in the trailers for the second one, Jeff Goldblum was in the trailers, and Jeff Goldblum is in the second one for about a minute, like literally about okay. a minute of screen time, and it was it was felt like a real slap in the face to like them trying to get people excited about Goldblum being back, and then yeah. or Ian Doctor Ian Malcolm being back, and then he's not in it. But this one, you've got like multiple scenes in this trailer with Goldblum, Laura Dern, and Sam Neill all there in in various different locations, making it really feel like they're in this movie, like they're back in this movie. And that is like all three of those actors haven't been together in a scene in a Jurassic Park movie since the first Jurassic Park movie. So I'm kind of against my better judgment because the director is the guy that made the first one and that's not a masterpiece. And he also made the book of Henry and that is a terrible film, but I'm kind of excited for this film now because that trailer really did get me emotional when I watched that it. That trailer is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it would have been nice if Steven Spielberg came back. I know, but he's making... he's. Did you hear this week? Because he's making The Fablemans, which is this movie about his childhood. Yeah. Because uh, we talked about this a few... This week, in a secret role, David Lynch was cast in it as an actor. Immediately making me way more interested in seeing that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's cool. Cool. I like it. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm emotional. Uh, yeah, we might need to do a special on that when when yeah. the time comes. <laughs> um, right. Uh, well, we could we, we could we could rank all the Jurassic Park movies. There's five Jurassic Park movies. If you watch them, we could do a top five Jurassic okay. Park movies. We could rank them, and then we could do a Jurassic World Dominion special, and that would be my birth perfect week. Okay, George. Okay, I've got a couple more trailers to show you. Yeah. Um, this one, I don't think you'll have seen this trailer, and uh, you can let me know why what you think i'm sending you now this so this is a this is a, a stephen king adaptation and the music in this movie is being jumped done by john carpenter so those are the two reasons why i'm interested in it so you can watch this trailer okay. and let me know what you think so the trailer is firestarter official trailer let's check yeah. it out oh okay, yeah three, sorry. sorry three two one go Is it supposed to be scary? Well, I think so, but it doesn't. Oh, look... Zach! Yeah, Zach Efron. Zach Efron, please do something good, cause I have a real soft spot for him. Yeah, me too. What happened? The bad. He's changed, hasn't he? He's different. Yeah, he's a man now rather than a boy. Yeah. Oh, 
There's a kid. And oh, she's on fire. She's a fire starter. Oh yeah, the film is called the farm. The film is called the fire starter. <laughs> Oh, so when she gets angry or something or scared, then she starts fires. Mm. Oh, and there's uh, that the dad from that '70s show. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember, but I, I know. Oh, so she's got superpowers. Yeah. Ah, so she needs to she needs to choose how to use her power. She, she just exploded a crow, which is yeah. um <laughs> the crow just went poof. So she's gonna become like an important person. But is she gonna oh. be a good guy or a bad guy? Well, the problem is, I think she's going to become a bad guy because of um, what is happening around her, that everybody's against her, so she's going to become a bad guy because people will want her power or something. Yeah, because people will want to use her as a weapon or something, so she's going to become, like, the bad, good guy. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's a Stephen King movie, not a comic book movie, so... Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like. Have you something. read the book? No, it's one of the th one of the ones I've never read. Mm. I've never got around to reading Firestarter because I've never really. I don't know. It's about a little girl who starts fires. Sounds all right, but not worth. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But that. I mean, that looks like something. Um, gonna watch it. Probably not. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll watch it and let you know then okay what do you think okay the last trailer i've got to show you uh you can decide now if you want to watch it or if you've seen it uh okay. it's the newest trailer for the buzz lightyear movie no i haven't seen it actually okay, i've seen, well, a, I've seen a, a, a photo of it on instagram but i haven't actually watched the trailer okay let's watch this trailer and bear in mind while watching this trailer just think about the fact that this movie is meant to be about let me get this right it's about the guy that it's about the real life guy that the toy was then inspired by in Toy Story. Ah, okay. So in the world of Toy Story, the events of this movie happened for real, and then they made a toy based on the guy. Okay. So think about the fact that Toy Story came out in the nineties and is probably set in the nineties. Yeah. And look at this movie, and think about when this movie is meant to be set. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ready to press play? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. So they live on a different planet. Yep. <clears throat> That's trapped on a different planet. They're trapped on a different planet. Mm -hmm. And there's like some kind of alien plant taking them away. Yep. And then he's going on a mission. Oh, they're using some David Bowie music. Mm. And the cat is quite funny. The cat. Um, Socks the cat. What do you think of that? It looks amazing. Like it looks in, like visually really good. Um, I don't know. Mm. Oh. <laughs> like what's when's what's, it set? What year is that happening in? I don't, I've no I, I I don't know. How are, how are the characters in Toy Story, the human beings in Toy Story, living in 1995, if that's happened? Yeah, they wouldn't be living that way, would they? No, they'd be they'd be living in, in, in on the moon or something, surely. 
Yeah, it's it, it's a bit confusing. I don't, oh, I don't understand. Yes. But be, maybe watching it will make sense. Yeah, maybe. But Chris Evans did tweet, this is not about the toy, this is about the man that the toy is based on. So, What, is Chris Evans? The voice of Buzz Lightyear. Chris Evans. From, he's Captain America. Ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, I had a moment. Are you thinking of Tim Allen? I was thinking about Chris Pratt for some reason. I was like, no, what, no, is he no, that? Chris is he Evans. him as well? No. Uh, I don't know, like, because the thing is, people my, our age, have watched Toy Story and fell in love with Toy Story. And, you know, we were, we kind of, we grew up with Toy Story. Yeah. Well, no, when did it come out, Toy Story? 1995. Yeah, yeah. And so this is kind of targeted for us, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, it, yeah. Yeah, and us going to the cinema with our kids. <laughs> Invisible kids. <laughs> but, but I don't know, like it just feels like weird, but it might be good. I don't know. Yeah. That's all the MyTube I've got for you today, Alex. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not as excited as uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park Dominion or whatever it's called. Jurassic World Dominion. Ah, Jurassic World Dominion. Yeah, Jurassic World Dominion and Men. Those are the two movies from today that I am pumped to see. Jurassic World Dominion and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, should we get into our top five for today? Absolutely. Five, four, three, two, one. Our top five. Good stuff. Right, top five Sandra Bullock movies. Um, go. What's your number five? Do, you want, do we want to talk about Sandra Bullock? Uh, she's great. She's the best. Uh, she's about being an amazing actress. She's about uh, continuing to be uh, a force in cinema and in blockbuster cinema at the age of 57. Um, she is continuing to make movies like the soon-to-come-out Lost City of D, where she is still able to be an action star and uh, a romantic partner to Channing Tatum and all of these things and kind of smashing the norms of what you would expect from an actress um, of her age at t- today. And that's that's from the, the work she's built up over the past 30 years or so of mm-hmm. just being amazing in, in everything she does. And like one thing, as I was getting ready for today's episode, I was looking her films up and realised that I've not seen as many of her films as I would have hoped I had (laughs) seen. So I've been doing some research and looking up different films of hers to watch. And she's ended up doing, um, I think, as is true of any uh, actress from her generation, she's ended up doing quite a few romantic comedies and films of that nature. And a fair few of them have had fairly bad reviews. And when you look at them up, when you look them up on Wikipedia to a T, every single one will say this movie got bad reviews but Sandra Bullock was singled out for giving a great performance. Like, in anything she does, she's good in it. Yeah. Whether the movie ends up being good or not is is not yeah. down to her. <laughs> she never makes a film bad. She's always absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, which is, which is yeah, speaks to how good she is. She's, she's correctly won an Oscar for a movie I haven't watched, The Blind Side, but I'm sure she's yeah. amazing in it. And, um, yeah, no, I just think she's she's absolutely fantastic. And she was great in the 90s when she was doing, you know, work then and she's just remained a a big force in cinema for 30 years which is not something everyone can say and she hasn't changed i can't believe she's 57 she looks incredible yes she does like 57 (laughs) that's crazy go sandy yeah go sandy bullock so so, what's your, num- what's your number five? My number five is a film which I love. Uh, of course, it hasn't got extremely good reviews, but I think she's amazing in it, and I think it's funny, and I think it's uh, Sandra Bullock at her, um, you know, comedic fun silliness. And uh, my uh, number five is 2000 Miss Congeniality. Ooh. 
where she plays Sandra. Uh, Sandy plays an undercover FBI agent, Gracie Hart, and uh, she's not very feminine. She's not very, you know, she ha- she has to be one of the the boys in uh, in her in the FBI, and so she's a bit kind of like not well looked after, and uh, she thinks that makeup and all the stuff is stupid, and women that wear makeup just makeup stupid, uh, and. Um, uh, she makes a mistake and she kind of uh, she's kind of become in the in the bad books. And so uh, because she's kind of in the bad books, when a case opens, uh, when uh, our serial killer says that his next target is the Miss United States beauty pageant, um, they uh, the the FBI decides to put an undercover cop. And because Grace is um, is. Uh, or Gracie, sorry, because Gracie is in trouble, um, she uh, they put her as an undercover cop uh, in this beauty pageant. So there is the classic kind of uh, night, two thousand nineties kind of beauty routine where they make her beautiful. Michael Caine is involved. I didn't put, I didn't say the cast, did I? Because I was t- just talking about Sandy. I'll tell the cast later. Uh, Michael Caine is involved to teach her how to be a woman, and she doesn't want to be there because she thinks that all these women are stupid. But then she she they beautify her and then she realizes that these women in the pageant are actually real women, that they're nice and she makes friends and she wants to protect them. She doesn't judge them anymore and whatever. It's a fun film. It's lovely. It's a classic 90s slash 2000 comedy. It's silly. It doesn't make much sense because, you know, who would put an undercover, like if you want an undercover agent, you wouldn't do all of that. But it's fun uh and it's got sandy bullock and uh michael kane benjamin bratt is in it uh, uh william shatner and uh and there's a uh yeah and it's a great film there is actually an amazing line where uh, you know when they ask uh, the questions for the 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 girls in the beauty pageants and it's like oh what's your idea of a perfect date and uh, one of the girls writes it says um a date like 20th of april because it's not too hot or not too cold it's just so <laughs> funny <laughs> and apparently that's an actual answer uh so you know it's it's a fun film i really like it it's congeniality and uh, yeah and I think Sandra Bullock. I I think probably if it wasn't Sandra Bullock in this film, it wouldn't have been as good. Good show. Have you watched? Have you seen Miss Congeniality? No, I never seen it. I was think I was twelve years old when it came out, and I remember seeing the posters for it everywhere. And I remember it being a huge film, uh, but no, I didn't see it myself, and I've never mm-hmm. seen it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it looks fun. It yeah, looks like a fun movie. Is. I remember the the poster is like inked into my brain like i can yeah. always bring the poster to mind yeah uh but yeah i know i've never seen and they did they did uh, miss congeniality too right mm-hmm. is that yeah. any good mm, i i don't remember what happened so i've not, oh, not fair probably enough. not that's fine <laughs> i don't remember like it's that's one of those fair. films that I, I think i've watched but i don't yeah cool yeah. Uh, good shout. So my number five is one of the films I watched this week uh, to prepare for this episode and uh, really enjoyed it. And it is a 1995 American romantic comedy starring Sandra Bullock, of course, alongside uh, Bill Pullman, Peter Gallagher, Peter Boyle and others. And it is the film While You Were Sleeping. Oh, interesting. Why interesting? Oh, just because... Just interesting. Have you... Have you seen it? Uh, yeah, but I don't like like uh, Miss Congeniality too. I don't remember. Okay, uh, in this movie, uh, Sandra Bullock plays a Chicago Transit uh, Authority token collector. Where um, and I was thinking, when I was watching. I was like, people watching this today just wouldn't understand what her job is, like why that job exists. She sits in a booth at the uh, train station and collects tokens from people as they get on the train um, to pay yeah. for their fare. And um, there's a man it's a very implausible plot and i think originally it was meant to be a man playing sandra bullock's part which would turn it into like a a total a, 
uh, if Sandra Bullock was a man in this movie, the plot would be unacceptable. <laughs> if a man did what Sandra Bullock does in this to a woman, then um, it would play very differently. But she basically, yeah. there's this guy played by Peter Gallagher who comes every morning at the same time and drops his token off and she's yeah. never spoken to him, but she thinks he's very attractive and nice looking. So she's sort of falling in love with him. Um, yeah. And... Uh, one day she's forced to work on Christmas. He turns up on Christmas Day to take the train, says Merry Christmas to her, and she's very like, oh, flustered. And then she sees him on the track, on the uh, on the platform, get mugged by two men and shoved onto the tracks where he's knocked unconscious. Uh, she jumps down onto the tracks and drags him out of the way of a moving train, saving his life. And um, she goes to the hospital to make sure he's okay. And due to a series of miscommunications in the hospital, his entire his entire family become. Uh, convinced that she is engaged to him. So while he's in this coma, she begins to get to know and become part of his family, despite the fact she's never spoken to him and doesn't know him. Um, and again, if a man did that to a woman, it would be creepy. <laughs> but it's, I think but it's, it's creepy even if a man, a woman does it, no? You're probably, you're probably right, and it kind of is, and it's, it, it's very sort of weird and implausible and odd, and like they go, they go to great lengths to... Um, try and justify it and to try and make it seem like a like she's in the situation she can't help it kind of thing um but then she meets his brother played by bill pullman and of course over the course of the movie uh, they start off not liking each other and they 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 learn to love each other and yeah. then eventually the brother wakes up and all the truth must come pouring out and uh, again the movie sort of jumps through a variety of quite tortured logical hoops to try and get Sandra Bullock with Bill Pullman but not make the guy it's very weird it's a yeah very weird plot but it's funny which is what's important it's like she lives in this apartment that's run by this guy uh this actor that plays Jackie April in The Sopranos and it was fun seeing him as this kind of like landlord tenant guy who is in love with her as well um like that was really funny Michael Rispoli playing Joe Fusco Jr that's that character and uh, Bill Pullman's very charismatic in it. Peter Boyle, uh, who was the dad in Everybody Loves Raymond, I think, mm. um, yeah, is and played the Frankenstein's monster in Young Frankenstein, the old Mel Brooks movie. He's very good in this, um, and it's just it's just funny and breezy and light, and it's good. Mm. And it probably all of that together would still not quite have it make my list, except for the thirty second sequence where. They tried to film just an insert shot to show that it's morning, a paper boy cycling along a road, throwing papers onto lawns. You've seen that scene in a hundred movies. Yeah. Um, except the second time the paper boy grabs the paper to throw it onto the lawn, like he's cycling along while he's doing this, uh, he absolutely whiffs it and smashes onto the floor. <laughs> and it's a very funny little bit. And I was like, how did they do that stunt? That stunt is that, how did they do that safely? Because it looks incredibly painful. And I looked it up and it was just the guy genuinely whiffed on the bike and, and broke his wrist and they left oh, it in the movie. No. <laughs> and it's... And I hope that that guy's wrist recovered and that he's fine. But it's an inc- it's an incredibly funny, weird little moment in the movie that you're not expecting, and um, I adore it for that reason. So, because of Sandra Bullock and unnamed paperboy extra who broke his wrist, that's my number five movie. Amazing. And uh, yeah, it's worth uh, checking now I remember out watching it. Like, cause I I looked at the posters. Like, if I don't, cause I there's so many films I've seen, and I looked at the posters. Like, if I don't remember what it is, that means it's not going to be in my top five. But now. I remember watching it and thinking how weird that uh, he uh, is a Bill Pullman. Yeah. He would just like <laughs> get with somebody that is so kind of like, with like Sandra Bullock. Like it has to be Sandra Bullock because like, you're weird. You just stalked my, my you just said that you were engaged with my brother and you're not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's quite, sh- um, and I remember like an episode of Friends kind of playing do- on that film as well. Um, yes, there is an episode of yeah, Friends that, that yeah. yeah does a riff on yeah. it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it became I think it became a weirdly big film in cult because the I think because the storyline is so odd it became yeah. this, it became quite yeah. like um, notable for that reason. But um, I think the way they make it work is that the brother's actually kind of an arsehole. So yeah, but when he wakes up, he has like this sort of revelation that he's been living his life wrong, and he tries to fall in love with Sandra Bullock as well. Despite the fact that he doesn't like no. no it's bizarre, but it's a it's a fun movie. I really liked yeah. it. And it's it's very of its time and place. Um, but that paperboy mm. w- whiffing it h- that hard <laughs> is uh, so, like it, thirty seconds of the film made you. <laughs> you could you could you could drop that sequence into a jackass movie, and it would be absolutely at home. 
<laughs> I'm gonna watch the sequence after we. Yeah. Uh, you definitely, you definitely should. It's very funny. Um, all right, what's your number four? Cool. Uh, so my number four is uh, Sandra Bullock at a bit serious um, film. And it's a film, a 1996 film, uh, 1996 film uh, called A Time to Kill. Oh, I almost watched this this week, but I didn't because I read that the French hate it. The French? The French hate this movie. Oh. Why? There's a see, there's a there's a little segment on uh, Wikipedia all about how much the French hate it. I think because it defends. I, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but the but the context I got from this little paragraph was that it sort of defends the death penalty and vigilantism, and France are pretty against those ideas. So it's it's weirdly yeah. been ha- been hailed in France as like a sign of awfulness and bad things. Well, which was I don't interesting. Know. I don't well, it think depends. it. Disp- I'd still watch the movie. I just it made me it, it made me laugh that the film has its own little segment on Wikipedia about how much French hate. <laughs> French hate. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Well, it's a 1996. Uh, it's like a legal drama, uh, and yep. it's based on John Grisham's uh, novel by the same title. I've never yep. read a John Grisham's novel, but it's all always about you know legal dramas and stuff, and yeah. um, it stars, of course, Sandy Bullock. Matthew McConaughey, 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 uh, Samuel L. Jackson. There is also uh, Donald Sutherland and Kiefer oh. Sutherland. Oh, wow. Donald Sutherland, by the way, is in Moonfall for two minutes. Oh, wow. I love that guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> he, he is, in fact, uh, the he... funny thing about Donald Sutherland in Moonfall is that he doesn't stand up in it. He clearly was like, I'll be in your movie, but I'm sitting down in a wheelchair and I'm not standing up. I love anyway, sorry, Sunday, go on. Sunday. Yeah, Have the, you ever seen the, the film MASH? Person. Yes. Oh. But I don't really remember it, but I, I've, if Kelly's he's Heroes is very good. And have you seen Kelly's Heroes? Uh, yeah. He's a, he plays like the spaced out hippie tank commander in that movie. Oh, I love it. great. He's yeah. good. And his son is in it, which is fun, and yep. is directed by uh, Joel Schumacher, who used to oh. be really, really popular once upon a time. And now mm. I, you don't really hear him hear about him very uh, often well i think he died so oh know. has he he I is dead so. yeah but only yeah. like two years ago like he, yeah. the last film he did he directed i think was in 2011 so he he might be a worse director than ron howard he might be he, he might be the worst of the hollywood directors uh well i think batman and robin wasn't too bad I oh, think he... what do you are, are you do you want me to are we stopping the recording now don't say that <laughs> Uh, have you seen the number 23 the jim carrey movie he did no have you seen flatliners no he's made some atrocious pieces i've of seen san Telmo's fire and that was good okay have you ever seen san Telmo's fire no because it's joel schumacher movie, so but I, I think i think that might change your your mind san Telmo's Def- fire well I just find all of his movies are have like scenes of people walking through a, a, like desolate neighborhoods with graffiti all over the walls. Mm. It, he's got such an odd visual style, and um, mm. he made Batman and Robin and Batman Forever and Flatliners and mm. the Number Twenty Three. Mm. Anyway, he did occasionally produce quality pieces of entertainment, such as A Time to Kill. A Time to Kill, and it's uh, it's a film based in Canton, Mississippi, and uh, this um, this lawyer and uh, his assistant uh, defend uh, uh, try to defend a black man who uh, is accused of uh, murdering in broad daylight in a courtroom uh, two uh, white men who have uh, sexually assaulted and killed... I don't know if she dies, but um, definitely... um, Well, beaten badly by two two men. Uh, In IMDb, they say it it calls them guzzling and rednecks. (laughs) Can I say that? (laughs) Guzzling uh, rednecks. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, are they, what are they? What are they? Guzzling beer. I don't know. Um, two white men, and um, it, and this, uh, and it kind of uh, because he he decides to take um, 
Reve- revenge, no, um, it's not revenge. Um, he, he tries to take the law in his hands in a way because he does. He he wants justice, and he takes mm. justice in his hands because he wants vigilante to, justice. Yeah, vigilante justice, and um, now like a- um, uh, Jacob Briggins, uh, played by Matthew McConaughey, uh, has to help uh, um, to get Carly, played by my. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson to uh, you know uh, get him um, to um, he has to represent him to get him you know free and um, and uh, it's basically like a story to say can uh, a black man get a fair trial in Mississippi and uh, and yeah it's it's a it's a it's a and there's a lot there's a lot of uh, there's there's the cuckoo's clan who goes against the lawyer well it talks about racism and how the the maybe the deep south uh does not judge people the same way and yeah it's 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 i it's sandra bullock is amazing in it and i think it's is a it's a good film it's uh it's um it's well acted it's carried by the actors that are in them in it in it and uh, I I really like it. And who's in it? I think it's interesting. Who's in it? Who's in it? I said it. Who's in it? There's uh, Matthew McConaughey, Sandra Bullock, Samuel Jackson, Kevin Spacey. Boo. I didn't mention him before. Uh, but Kevin Spacey Boo. plays a really hateful guy that Good. wants to uh, that uh, that is against Samuel Jackson because he wants to be um, he wants to become senator of the of whether of um, Mississippi is in Mississippi, isn't it? Yeah, let's yeah, say yes. Ten- eh? Tennessee, Mississippi, Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, he wants to be the senator of the state they're in. And yeah. so he's a very hateful guy. Ashley Judd is in it. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so, yeah, of course, we don't we don't like um, Kevin Spacey, but you don't you won't like him in this film either. Good. Don't worry. Hate him. Uh, it, yeah, no, I do want to watch um, A Time to Kill. It sounds like my kind of film. I like a good legal courtroom drama thriller type movie. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I, I, American courtroom dramas are fascinating, you know, because yeah. I've seen some actual courtrooms in America and they all seem like that. <laughs> so it's just pretty accurate. Do you know what is apparently like, often held up in law schools as the most accurate representation of the legal process in cinema? What? A time to the kill. Fil- no, no, no. The film My Cousin Vinny. Ah, yeah. The yeah. Joe Pesci movie. I love that because yeah, yeah. it's a comedy and it's really funny. But apparently, it's the most accurate kind of um, take on on a courtroom drama that, that Hollywood has done. Um, cool, good pick. Uh, let's go to my number four, which is yeah. another nineteen ninety five film alongside While You Were Sleeping. Uh, this one is an action thriller movie directed by Erwin Winkler and stars Sandra Bullock, of course, along with Jeremy, no- Jeremy Northam and Dennis Miller. Um, it's not a very good film, really, but I love a good '90s action thriller movie. It's pretty iconic, though. I know exactly what you're going to talk or say. Uh, okay, it's 1995's The Net. The Net, of course. The Net. You've seen The Net? Yeah. Oh my god, this movie! I watched this movie the first time this week and <sighs> um, was pretty blown away by 1995's interpretation of what the internet is because it's great and I loved it. Oh. Um, but watching when you're in 1995, when you're 10 years old. Oh, my God. I was like, what? Like, that film gave me great anxiety. <laughs> yeah. So, Sandra Bullock is Angela Bennett. Yeah. Um, I'm a, Angela Bennett! Yeah. A computer, <laughs> a computer hacker lady uh, who works um, for a company um, doing... Uh, Bugs. She finds viruses in in computer software for a company mm. and gets rid of them. Um, she works from home. Yeah, and she or she orders food on the internet. She's yeah, she's kind of twenty twenty two. She kind of is. She's she's anticipating uh, the coronavirus pandemic about yeah. um, twenty years earlier than anyone else could have done. It's impressive work on her part. Um, and yeah, there's a scene very early on where she orders a pizza through the internet, which I think is the first time that that had been 
yeah. portrayed. I think it wasn't mm-hmm. actually a thing that you could do at that point. Uh, and it's called like cyberpizza.net is the website yeah. or something. And when she clicks <laughs> large, the little bits of the pizza make, get, gets bigger. Uh, yeah. It's great. It's really oh, fun. It's so good. Um, and then, yeah, she ends up, um, she gets a virus that's like going to, uh, the plot of this movie is stupid. There's like a, there's a guy who kills himself because he's got, HIV and then she finds out through this virus that he doesn't have HIV and then she goes yeah. away on holiday and uh, while on holiday she falls in love with this guy and they have like a one night stand and then the guy reveals that he's a bad guy this is a uh, Jack Devlin played by Jamie Northam and, and um, I like he's British isn't he yeah yeah he's like a British yeah, guy yeah, he's yeah. like a, he's like the, the important the... bit it's like he's, he's got this British accent so he must yeah. be evil he's got a terrible <laughs> accent and he's a terrible actor he's very bad in this movie <laughs> Um, but he kind of, she ends up falling off this boat and wakes, washes up days later, um, without any, without any of her stuff. And she has to make her way back to America. And while she's in the airport trying to sort things out, somebody comes up to her and and is like, are you Ruth Maddox or something? And, uh, she, she's like, no, but they've got, they've got this visa ready to go with her name on it, which is bizarre. And she kind of gets back to, and then when she gets back to LA, she finds that her house has been emptied of all its stuff and she's been moved out. And basically her identity has been stolen because these evil hackers have got, can just do whatever they want with the internet. There's this scene where she's like, she's trying to explain to the police that she's not this person who she now has an ID for. She's, she's actually uh, Angela Bennett. Uh, I am police... Angela Bennett. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's a scene where the policeman goes out to the car to check up on this fake name that she's been given. And as the policeman's checking, you see the bad guy like typing in, oh, she's wanted for drugs and she's wanted for violence. And then it pops up on the computer guys, the policeman's screen, policeman's computer. So she becomes wanted and she has to go on the run. And this, this, uh, the only, like nobody really knows her because she's like a shut in. So she can't prove who she is. Yeah. And her mum's got dementia. So even her mum can't vouch for her. And uh, the only person who can is Dennis Miller playing this very annoying doctor character, Dr. Alan Champion, who just doesn't believe her at all. And clearly, and it's, 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 it's a stupid, weird movie, but um, like 90s. It is not stupid, no weird. It is. But 90s, <laughs> 90s cyber thrillers are like yeah. a, a bit of a soft spot for me. And I really enjoyed watching that this movie this week. And uh, yeah, I had a really good time with it. And Sandra Bullock is, is amazing in it. Like this movie wouldn't be worth watching if she wasn't uh, yeah. smashing people in the face with fire extinguishers and stuff. So yeah. good for her. Keep going. I like it. She, yeah. should, she should keep making movies, I think, after this one. Yeah, So definitely. yeah. Good choice. Thank good you. Good choice. What's your number three? My number three is a more recent one and is 2018 heist movie, Ocean's 8. Ah, Ocean's 8. Yeah. What a a lovely film. What a lovely film. And this this was a a weird, because I put so many, it was between this and others, but I really like her here. Um, and it's about uh, Devi Ocean, uh, which is, uh, oh, well, first the cast. We have Sandra Bullock, Kane Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, Ellen Bonham Carter, Mindy Kaling, Sarah Paulson, Aquafina, Rihanna, and, and that's for just the eight. And then there's other people, but they don't matter, do they? No. No. And it's... <laughs> They don't matter. And uh, it's about, uh, you know, uh, Debbie Ocean, played by um, Sandra Bullock, who is the younger sister of uh, uh, Danny Ocean that used to be um, George Clooney. Uh, she just got re- released by, uh, in, by released uh, from prison. And, you know, she's a reformed woman, but she's not. Uh, she is planning a heist with her former partner in crime, Lou, played by Kate Blanchett. And they're going to make a heist. Uh, they're going to try and steal a $150 million, cart- million dollar Cartier necklace from the Met Gala. And they are planning a heist. It's a very good heist movie. And I think Sandra Bullock is really good in it and a very uh, believable uh, ocean sister. So Definitely. I love her in, in her here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. And She's I really, fantastic. I've already spoken about this movie in previous episodes and I think it's just a great film. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fair. No, it's really good. Uh, it's a pity we didn't get a sequel. I hope that one day they yeah. can get it together well, to make another one. 
It came out four years ago now. Would they make a sequel? Yeah, they might. Because there's they'll they'll make another Oceans movie at some point, and hopefully they'll bring mm. back. Uh, they won't just bring back George Clooney and Brad Pitt again. Hopefully they they get. Well, um, George Clooney's dead, isn't he now? No, George Clooney's alive. What are you no, George. Cl- sorry, <laughs> George Clooney's alive, but the character's dead. Ah, is the character not dead? is. Well, yeah, but I mean, they can just be like, "Oh, he faked his own death. Here he is again." Like, ah, true. I I true. wouldn't be- I wouldn't take that for granted necessarily. Hmm. Yeah. And doesn't the, doesn't the movie doesn't the movie even hint at the end maybe that he's still alive? I don't remember. It's a while since I've watched it, but yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they can bring him back if he wants to make another yeah. one. Yeah, um, and it'd be cool to see him and Sandra Bullock, you know, yeah. together in a in a movie. Yeah, because um, they did they do a film together? Was it not um, called which I haven't seen? Uh, Gravity. I think so. I think they did Gravity together. Maybe, but I haven't watched it because you know me and space and infinity. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't mm. really get along with those things. Um. Anyway, my number three. Yes, please. Okay, my number three is the another recent one like you. It's the twenty thirteen movie uh, directed by Alfonso Cuarón, Gravity, starring Sandra Bullock oh. and George Clooney. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I Tricked wish I could you. watch that film. It's a good film, man. Um, yeah, this this movie is, uh, it won Oscars and stuff for being, it, it sort of revolutionised special effects. Um, mm. Sandra Bullock plays an astronaut. Uh, second time we've discussed astronauts today. Uh, Dr. Ryan Stone, an astronaut who's uh, on her first mission in space and um, sort of, due to a horrible mistake incident ends up drifting alone in space trying to survive and get back to earth um and all these sequences of, yeah, it's pretty terrifying uh, all these yeah. sequences of her sort of desperately trying to survive and work out to survive or space debris flying around her and stuff and when it came out it was in 3d and it was just kind of this incredible 3d movie and george clooney plays um the commander of the team she's on and uh he's hardly in the movie he's like the second lead and he's barely in it like this is the most Sandra Bullock movie there's ever been really. She's, she yeah. is, she is all about Sandra Bullock uh, all the time. And uh, she absolutely makes the film work like a massive special effects spectacle. You really care about the character because Sandra Bullock kind of imbues it with such sort of humanity and um, it really works. And uh, I've only actually seen it once because it is such an intense experience. I saw it in the cinema when it came out. I haven't rewatched really it since, but it left a pretty indelible impression on me and I, uh, I do really love it. Uh, it's only 90 minutes long. And uh, yeah, it's a great film. It's a great film, Gravity. Um, yeah. And Alfonso Cuarón is just a master of the art, and uh, everything everything came together on that movie to create pretty pretty perfect cinema, pretty revolutionary cinema as well, I think. Um, so yeah, and yeah, and they don't like her and George Clooney don't really have many scenes together. So again, it would be good to see them. Like they're both such good actors, it'd be good to see them in a in another movie together. Yeah. So yeah, I wish I could yeah I I I wish I could watch that movie but I probably just just won't be able to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> space. Uh, you lost in space. No, thank you. What's your number 2? My number 2 is a film, a 1999 1995 film directed by Ewan Erwin Winkler. The next. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, it's such a good film, like especially for 1995. Like it showed technology that we didn't even have, and you know, uh, and she's such a badass, and she's a computer programmer or whatever she is, and she's she's amazing, and it's scary. Like she's not a person anymore, and she's alone, and but she's always been alone, but now nobody knows who she is, and I don't know. It's mm. a great film. I love it. It is a great film. I agree. It is a really great film. So, yeah, good choices all around. Uh, the net. The net. I like it. Very good. Um, yeah, good. I'm glad we agree. I didn't expect The Net to be the movie that we agreed on. <laughs> um, no. All right. My number two, then. Yeah. Is a movie. It's the most recent movie on my list. It's from 2013. Oh, actually, that's the same year as Gravity, isn't it? So Gravity and this both came out in 2013. Wow, I didn't realise that. And... Um, this one is a action comedy movie directed by Paul Feig. 
uh, starring Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy, and it's <gasps> The Heat. Uh, the Heat. <laughs> the Heat. Have you seen this movie? Yeah. Yeah, uh, good. I love it. Um, They're a I good watched... couple. Yeah, I never, I've never watched this movie because I've never particularly had loads of time for Melissa McCarthy, but she, I've enjoyed stuff she's been in, but some of the stuff she's been in is pretty bad. Um, but I've sort of, I guess I'm learning that Paul Feig uh, gets the best out of her because I really like the Ghostbusters movie she did and I really liked um, mm. Spy, which she did with Paul Feig as well. And I watched this movie just this morning and really, really enjoyed it as well. And um, Melissa McCarthy's really funny in it as, as like the more outwardly humorous character as a very sort of crass Boston uh, cop. Mm. And Sandra Bullock plays kind of the straight woman of the of the of the two as an FBI agent um called da, 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 Sarah Ashburn and uh Melissa McCarthy is Shannon Mullins. And um yeah, they end up teaming up together to try and take down a uh, crime lord drug dealer in Boston and um that's kind of the movie. But yeah. uh and, and and as is the case with and it's it doesn't always work, but it sort of works in this one. As is the case with modern comedies, they have very simple basic plots that are really just an excuse to put two people together and get them to kind of improvise and see what happens. And there's plenty of pretty funny movies and uh, pretty funny moments in this film, particularly there's a scene where Sandra Bullock tries to give a guy a tracheotomy in a cafe that's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's a scene where Sandra Bullock gets uh, stabbed in the leg um, that, again, is really, really funny. And... Um, yeah, she's just she's very good in it. She's very very funny. Like she's done romantic comedies before, but she's not really done this kind of comedy before, at least not that I've seen. And Melissa McCarthy is kind of absolutely in her element in this kind of film, and it's great that Sandra Bullock is able to to rise to it, and she becomes looser and looser throughout the movie, and by the end is kind of a bit more of a of a loose cannon in the way that Melissa McCarthy's character is, and it's fun. She plays that really well, like the progression of her character throughout the film. Mm. It's quite subtle at first, but she the way she changes her character is really good, and yeah, it's just um. It's a very funny, very easy to watch film, and I really enjoyed it. So, The Heat is my my second favorite Sandra Bullock film. Um, nice. There's a scene where they drop a man onto a car that made me laugh quite a bit as well. <laughs> so yeah, number two. What's your nice. number one? Okay, my number one is my big nostalgia pick. I love this film. I've seen it many times. I I know the soundtrack off by heart because I I owned it. <laughs> so I it's a great film. Not the greatest reviews, but I uh, I think Sandy Bullock is amazing in it and is 1998 fantasy romantic comedy based on a, on a, also a novel Practical Magic. Practical Magic. <sighs> Never seen it. Um, so uh, uh, the film uh, stars uh, Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman, uh, Stockard Ch- Channing, uh, Diane Weist, Goran Viznic. I don't know if you know him. He no. used to be in ER. Did you ever watch mm-hmm. ER? No. He was one of the doctors, and that's why I also like this film because I used to be really into ER, and then he was in it, and he was like, "Oh my god!" Um, Aiden Aiden Quinn, and uh, it's about uh, these uh, two sisters played by uh, Sandra Bullock and Kidman, and um, who uh, come from a a family of uh, witches. They've been raised by uh, their aunts because uh, their parents have passed. And uh, uh, they grew up in a household where magic was uh, used and, uh, you know, practical magic, not uh, evil magic. You know, there's black magic. Um, But the family has a curse that uh, the men who uh, fall in love with them are uh, doomed and will die. Uh, they live in this tiny island where people judge them, but they can live pretty much a normal life. Um, Sandra Bullock's uh, character, uh, she decides that she doesn't want to do witchcraft anymore, but she uses her power into kind of like medicine, whilst Nicole Kidman's character is a little bit more uh, wild. So basically, will this curse be lifted? Who knows? But it's 
a great film. It's really lovely. There's uh, there's some black, there's some magic, and I feel like Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman worked really well together. The soundtrack is really fun, and uh, yeah, it's it's a good fun movie, and I've have really good nice feelings about it. So yeah, cool. I um thought that this was a horror film when I was a kid. Oh, it could be like there's a scene where somebody dies and they try to revive him, and what comes back is not really nice. I think somebody described the plot to me when I was a kid, like an older kid who'd seen it, as like, oh, it's about two witches who every one that they go out with or fall in love with dies. Yeah, and I, and to me, I in my head, I just spun that into like, oh my god, so everyone they meet just dies, it's, and I just, I just. <laughs> And I used to see it in the video shop. I used to see the cover in the video shop and it was the two of them on the cover with like candles around them smiling. Yeah. And I used to be terrified of it. I used to genuinely be scared of the cover of this film in the video shop. I think it was yeah. like the scariest movie you could possibly see was Practical Magic. Well, if you watch it, it could be a bit scary. But yeah. Uh, I watched um, the trailer the other day and it didn't look very scary. No, it's not at all. <laughs> but when you're like a young kid, it could be. Yeah. But yeah, uh, and that's my number one. Practical interesting, good magic. choice. Um, my number one is a little bit boring because we've talked about it before, but I, it's a movie <laughs> I really love, so I can't yeah. not have it, even though it's been in another top five I've done. It is the 1994 action thriller movie directed by Jan de Bont, starring Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves, Speed. 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 Yes, please. Yeah, where is it? Wherein Sandra Bullock plays Annie Porter a woman who is dragged into this mad plot to blow up a bus and ends up driving the bus. And um, again, the the chemistry she has with Keanu Reeves in this movie is perfect. <sighs> um, the She's just wonderful in it. And um, I love the bit where she thinks she's run over a pram with a baby in it and it's all full of cans instead. And she's all upset. And then, yeah, it's good. Good movie. Good bit. It's a great and, movie. And... Uh, Bit at the end where her and Keanu Reeves are lying together in the street and they've just survived it all and she's like, or he says, one of them says, you know, relationships built on shared traumatic experiences statistically never last and then they're just like, ah, oh, who cares? And then they start smooching in the road and it's great. Oh. Great um, yeah, so Speed, Sandra Bullock's great in it, Keanu Reeves is great in it, I love it. Have you seen The Lake House, the other movie that they're both no. in? No. Yeah, that movie sounds weird. No, I haven't. Fair enough. I nearly watched it this week, but I decided uh, to no. watch other things because it's not that easy to see. Um, so, yeah, that's my number one, is Speed. Do you want to run through your top five one more time? Great choice, by the way. I love Speed. The Thank film. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. Good to make that clear. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, my number five is Miss Congeniality. My m- number four, A Time to Kill. Number three, Ocean's Eight. Number two, The Net. And number one, Practical Magic. I like it. Good. My top five was uh, number five, While You Were Sleeping. Number four, The Net. Number three, Gravity. Number two, The Heat. And number one, Speed. Ooh. Ooh. And um, you got any honourable mentions going on? Yeah. Uh, my honourable mentions are Speed, which you just mentioned I love. Uh, the Heat, which is your number two. Mm-hmm. Great film. Uh, the Blind Side, uh, a film where she won an Oscar and she plays uh, this lady who adopts uh, this um, uh, this kid who comes uh, from a struggling family. Um, Demolition Man, mm. uh, 1993 film, which um, uh, she plays a policewoman. She plays a police a police officer. Where she plays a police officer. She plays a p- police officer quite often, doesn't she? Yeah, and she plays an FBI agent fairly regularly as well. Cause yeah, yeah, but I really, I really and uh, the heat. I really like this. I I really like Demolition Man, and I really like her in it. I think she's uh, uh she's great. And a film called Twenty Eight Days, where she plays a person that drinks a lot, but doesn't think that she has a problem. But then, uh, uh, certain um, decisions that she makes make make her go to rehab, and she realizes that she actually actually has a problem. I think it's good, uh, different side of uh, Sandra Bullock, and mm-hmm. that's my honorable mentions. Yeah, I nearly watched uh, Twenty Eight Days this week. The tra- I watched a trailer for that and it looked quite good. I might still mm, give it a go at good. some point. 
Um, so my well, first of all, my dishonorable mention is the with no one's mentioned it yet. So I'm assuming you're going to agree that either it's not very good or you haven't seen it. But I watched two weeks' notice this week. I yeah, with uh, Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, that it's movie is rubbish. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's a romantic she comedy, been... and it's not got yeah. any jokes in it. There's no, literally it... there literally aren't jokes. It's bizarre. No. It's um, a terrible film. Yeah, even though. Hugh Grant and Sandra Bullock are both really good. Like I like both yeah. of them a lot. I've got a lot of time yeah. for both of them, and they're trying the best. But there's and Donald Trump is in it, which just makes it even worse. <laughs> just, yeah. Um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed by that because actually, the, like when you look up her movies, like there's some that haven't. Like Twenty Eight Days, for example, has bad reviews. Practical Magic doesn't have very good reviews. Two weeks notice. If you look that up, there's it's it's kind of got fairly decent reviews. I don't know why. Yeah. It's there's nothing to that movie. It's crap. Anyway, there's also mentions. like, have you you didn't check out the proposal, did you? No, because uh, that, um, that movie's got Ryan Reynolds in it, so I don't need to. Ryan watch it. Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. I think she got a Razzie for it. She got a Razzie for All About Steve. The, the All um, About Steve, yeah. The Bradley Cooper one. one. And I she actually trailer. went to collect the yes, Razzie. Yes, I remember that because it wasn't it like the same I year. Her. I think it was the same year she did The Blind Side or something. Maybe I think it was like similar. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I watched the trailer for All About Steve and it it does look awful. Like, it yeah. looks really bad. Um, and the proposal as well. Just... Yeah, I mean, Ryan, I, I don't like Ryan Reynolds really, so that's fine. Um, but honourable mentions I do have are, like you mentioned, Demolition Man. I also love that movie. I think it's brilliant and she's very good in it. Uh, Murder by Numbers, where she plays, a, again, a, a yeah. sort of law enforcement agent trying to solve... Um, it's based on the Leopold and Loeb case where two teenagers tried to commit the perfect murder. So it's sort of... Um, uh, a, an adaptation of that real life crime kind of thing, and it's pretty enjoyable thriller if I remember rightly. Ocean's Eight, which was in your list, of course, um, and that's all I've got down because I've also got written here two weeks notice and Crash, but I think both of those movies are terrible, so I'm not gonna. Not my <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna do a top five best picture Oscar winners at some point, aren't we? And um, yeah, definitely. Crash is not gonna be on my list. I can tell you that one for for certain. Is that Crash. with Sandra Bullock? Yeah, it's like the one about a load of people all experiencing racism in LA and it's um, a bad film. It's not very good. Okay. Yeah. And it's mm. like an ensemble, so Sandra Bullock's not in it much, but I okay. don't, don't like it. Um, yeah, and it's not the... There's another movie called Crash, which is the David Cronenberg movie about people yeah. having sex and car crashes. It's, that's yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was like, what? No, hmm. different film. Um... So yeah, that's been our uh, top five Sandra Bullock special. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Before we go, we need to assign each other some homework. Yes. Um, what do you want me to watch? So you haven't watched Miss Congeniality, Miss Congeniality yep. uh, A Time to Kill, yep. and Practical Magic. Yep. Uh, well, I, think, I think you should decide what to watch, I think. Okay. I would recommend all three because all three are great. All three are movies I want to watch, but I'm going to go with A Time to Kill, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I might watch Practical Magic as well because I kind of want to see that one. So I'm going to try and watch both yeah. at some point. But uh, for homework, I'll watch A Time to Kill. Um, you I'm have... going to watch Jaws. Yeah you, yeah, you have to watch Jaws. You're late on that one. Yeah. But that doesn't get you and out I'm of homework not... this week going to watch gravity no i know i know i'm not gonna make you watch gravity so i think that leaves while you were sleeping i think you should watch that because you don't remember it okay and it's on it's on disney plus if you've got that okay no problem cool Cool. and uh you let me know what you think about that boy whiffing it on the bikes it's pretty good (laughs) yeah um that's been uh, that's been uh it's been a fun time uh this week i think we've it's been enjoyable so Next week, uh, we're going to do a big review of, um, I think, what we both agree is one of the absolute best albums to come out last year, yeah. if not uh, in the past decade, uh, Prioritise Pleasure by Self Esteem. So uh, have a listen to that if you've not listened to it yet, because it is, it is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, definitely. And I can't wait to uh, to talk about that with you next week. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a really mm. good conversation. Um, so that will be next week. And... Um, do you have a recommendation for people from Culture Catch-Up this week? I would recommend a book I read uh, because I think it's a great, uh, it's a very uh, well-written and um, 
book to read is uh, Voices of the Lost uh, by Hoda Barakat. Nice. And I'm going to recommend the new Big Thief album, Dragon New War Mountain, I Believe in You. It's a fantastic piece of work, so check it out. And uh, that's been it. Please please go and rate and review us on all the podcast apps that you use, particularly Spotify and Apple Podcasts, iTunes. You can review us there, and it would really help if you dropped us a rating and a review. Obviously, positive ones are helpful. And um, uh, critis- criticisms to eat privately on email, please. That would be better <laughs> if you have critics. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you can find us. All the links to all the things we discussed in Culture Catch Up are on the show notes for this episode and every episode, along with links to what we discussed in my tube and um, links to all our social media channels. Particularly, go and follow us on Instagram, where you can see uh, movie reviews from me and uh, a fantastic artwork from Alex every week for each episode we do, which Thank is. You. Um, you're very welcome which is uh, always good so please do go and give us a follow on instagram and uh, have a chat to us over there if you'd like or you can email us in uh, suggestions for future episodes would always be appreciated and um yeah thank you so much thank you thank you all of you bye 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 bye, bye.